virtual walkthrough on a Keystone Cougar fifth wheel. Let's start in the back. Up there you are pre-wired for a backup camera. It does not come with one, it's just uh, pre-wired for it. So you just replace that plastic with the camera. Super simple, something we could do or something you guys could do if you wanted. Receiver. Um, let's see if this one is for towing. Yep, for towing it has a uh, max trailer weight of 3,000 pounds, max tongue weight of 300 pounds. Just watch out for that. Then you do have a seven way for trailer lights and whatnot. Ladder. So it is a walkable roof. You can get up there and walk around. I do encourage going up there every once in a while, walking around, making sure um, everything's okay. Right here is your fresh water. This is where you're going to do all of your filling for your onboard fresh tank. So it does have an onboard tank for a supply of water. They're usually around 45, 50 gallons. Close that locket, you're good. You're going to want to drain this after every trip, um, especially if you don't use it all. If you only use half of it and your next trip isn't for a few weeks or so, you don't want that water sitting in there. It'll get stagnant. So there's your drain for it right there. That right there is a long tube to store your sewer hose in. So you just open this. opens up like a door. These do not come with a sewer hose. That will be something you have to purchase on your own. 30 amp, sorry, 50 amp short cord. This one is yours. This twists on, tighten this on to give it some extra on there. It threads on to, to here. There's a little thing you have to line up. Twist it on, keeps it from getting unplugged. So 50 amp. Slide seals, every once in a while you're gonna wanna inspect them, make sure they're not dry or cracked or rotting or anything like that. Once a year, I recommend doing a slide maintenance. That just entails cleaning the seals and then spraying on a uh, seal conditioner. We sell that here or some other places sell it. Spray it on, let it sit for a little bit, wipe it off. Make sure you get both sides of these seals. That just keeps them conditioned, keeps them from drying out on you. Come on over here. That's just access to your fridge. There's one below and up top. It's also for airflow for your fridge, so you want to make sure it stays clear of any debris. Every once in a while, pop this off. You just give these a quarter of a turn. The whole thing will pop up and clean back there. Coming down here, this is going to be your favorite part of your whole trip. I have my little testing apparatus on there. Let's pull that off. There we go. That is where you're going to dump. So you have a cap, your holes will look have the ends like that, it looks the same. You would put your hose on like that, twist it, and then you'd be ready to dump if that were your hose. If your cap's on like that, make sure before you take your cap off that they are closed. So they're empty now, so they can be on like that. So that one is your black tank. The other one is your gray tank. Um, black is your toilet water, gray is like your shower and sink water. This also has a second gray tank, it's labeled right here. Your dump valve for that is right here. So push that and closed. Just like that. Then once you make sure they're all closed, then you could take your cap off to hook your hose on to dump it. When you dump it, I recommend doing your black tank first. Let that get completely dumped. Then dump your gray tank. That gray water will flush out your sewer hose so when you pick it up to move it, it's not as dirty. Access to your furnace. Um, there's not much you guys have to do besides maintenance. Just make sure this stays clear of any debris. They make screens to put on there. I recommend those. Just keep insects and whatnot out of there. I don't recommend using compressed air to clean it. You'll just blow it further into the furnace. It could cause more issues. In here, you have an outdoor shower. Quick disconnect, so you just rotate this. This whole thing flies off. Comes off. You can see the, these little locking tabs. They'll line up there. So you do have hot and cold out here. For winterization, city water, tank flush. So when you hook your hose up to here, you don't want anything, anything off of city water pressure. You won't need to use your pump for anything if you're running it through there. Here is a winterization hookup, which is nice. This has been winterized. We winterize all of our winter units. You can see how it's set up now. Water heater is in bypass, so no water will get into the water heater. Then you're on winterize. So now, Instead of your pump pumping from the fresh tank, it's going to pump from this fitting here. So you get you your uh, 
an old uh, garden hose with the end cut off so you can screw into here. Stick that into your gallon of antifreeze up in here. Turn the pump on. It's going to suck from that gallon. And then you run every fixture until you see pink antifreeze, like it is now. And then when you, you guys are going to want to do the opposite when you get ready to use it. Um, leave, leave this in bypass, but turn this off. Fill, fill your fresh tank up with a little bit of water. Um, turn the pump on, run each fixture until you see clear water. Then come over here, put your hose in through here. Do the same, do the same thing. You won't have much paint coming out. You just want to get this area clear of antifreeze too. Then you can take your water heater out of bypass after you put your plug in for the water heater. The reason you want to do it bypass last when you're dewinterizing is because if you take it out of bypass first when you dewinterize, it's going to take all that antifreeze and pump it out into the tank. So you don't want that. You do have a tank flush, which is a super neat fleet feature on these. When you're dumping your black tank, you can hook a hose into here. Most dump stations do have a hose. Turn the hose on, there's a sprayer built into the tank. It'll flush everything out. Keep in mind, do not use it while your uh, black tank is closed. Because if you forget about it, or if you mistake that one for your city, it's going to start filling your black tank. Um, do got your input for cable and satellite, as well as the solar up there. You have a battery disconnect here. So right now, the battery is connected. So it is receiving a charge from the converter. So anytime this camper is plugged in, the battery does receive a charge, as long as your battery is connected. I recommend when you store it for long periods of time, disconnecting the battery keep anything from using it. Um, a couple things though, always using it even when you're not aware. So you got a uh, radio memory, your LP alarm is always using some battery power. So disconnect the battery is going to kill it from, disconnect it, keep it from getting killed from a light you left on or some appliances that you didn't realize were still on. Right here, you have your auto leveling. So you just hit, go to here. When you're ready to auto level, you'll hit auto level. It'll level itself out. It'll beep and say auto level success when you're done. When you're ready to be done, let's say you're ready to, you closed up, get ready to retract all the jacks. You can go here, auto retract rear. It's just going to retract the rear jacks. Or if you keep going, let's see. Let's see if I can't find it. There you go. Auto reconnect. So when you hit auto reconnect, it's going to retract the rear jacks and then it's going to bring the front ones up to the height they were when you hit auto level that way it's already at the height it almost at the height it was when you got it off your truck so you won't have to remember that let's say if you did the other way around and you needed to raise and lower it to get on your truck or off your truck when you hit front if you just hit the front right there it's just going to raise the front ow but if you hit retract sorry good tight space in here this light will turn on now anything you hit it's going to be retracting the jack. So if I hit front again, no, it's going to lower the front. And that's how you're going to raise and lower this to get it on and off your truck. Pretty simple. Lots of storage in there and an automatic light, which is nice. Here is one of your propane tanks. They're both off now. This one has your two-stage regulator in it. There's a little black piece up there. You can kind of see it's pointing that way. So if you follow this hose, it's going to be to the tank on the other side. So it'll pull propane from that tank first. You can have them both on if you want. If you were to have them both on, it's still going to pull from that tank first. Once that one were to get emptied, it'll automatically switch to pulling propane from this tank. However, that little black selector, which you can move manually, it doesn't rotate when it switches over. This doesn't tell you in any way that it's switched to the opposite tank. So my recommendation is just leave one off. That way you know when, it, that way you know you're down a tank, so you can get it filled. Because if it switches and you don't realize it, you could be halfway through this tank, but you think you're still on the other one. Next thing you know, you're high and dry with no propane. So keep that in mind. This this sticker's nice. Sometimes they don't print the dry weight. This one does, so it's 7,390 pounds. Get your gross vehicle weight rating 10,000 pounds. That's the most this trailer will ever weigh. That includes cargo and whatnot. You have a cargo cap carrying capacity of 2,049 pounds. You'll probably never have that much stuff in here, but that's your cargo carrying capacity. Water does count as cargo. And then tire pressure, 80 PSI. You do have these cameras right here. No, they're not cameras. They're pre-equipped just like your, your rear one is to have cameras put in here so you can monitor your blind spots, one on each side. You have a little underlight here, some docking lights, so 
if you look in that reflection there, you got one above your pin box, and then decorative LEDs. So these right here, and then that light right there. Keep in mind, they still gotta clean this, so still gonna wash it and clean the inside before it gets delivered to you folks. So it may look a bit cleaner when you get it. This does have a, a clip to retain it, but we're not gonna be in here for very long. There's your batteries. There's two of them in there. When you want to disconnect them, use your battery disconnect. In the winter, I do recommend taking them out so they don't get uh, left outside in the cold um, if they're not receiving a charge. If you can plug this camper in or if you're on a permanent spot, you can just leave it plugged in and leave your batteries connected. It's going to constantly receive a charge and you won't have to worry about it. do recommend if you are going to take your batteries out because of the winter, take a picture because there's all different cables on them and you don't want to uh, hook it up wrong. Well, here is your brain for the leveling system. There's nothing you guys need to touch back here. Um, so there's nothing really uses, user serviceable, so don't, don't fiddle with it. You have a cable and satellite outlet, so you can have a TV outside if you wanted to, which is nice. And then a GFCI outlet for said TV or any appliance you plug in outside. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit, so if one were to trip, they're all going to trip. I'll show you on the inside. Where did we set it? This is your door for your water heater. Just that turns, pops it off. It's super simple. Water heater is very easy to use when you're ready to, for the season. Do what I said, dewinterize it, run, every, run all the antifreeze out of it. And then you can put the plug in, tighten this in. Fifth, uh, inch and a sixteenth is the socket size, so I, I tighten it, snug it down with a socket, don't over tighten it. Then when you take it out of bypass, just start filling with water. Excuse me. Once it's full, you can turn it on. All your controls are from the inside on the touchscreen, except for one. Um, there's a switch for electric. It's off now. I'm going to leave it off. Um, you can turn it on, and it still won't turn on. You have to turn it on from inside. But as a safety feature, I like turning it off just in case. Um, so if you guys turn it on from your in command and you're wondering why you don't have electric, make sure you come out here and turn that switch on. Definitely recommend draining it after every trip. You don't want water sitting there to get stagnant. Definitely recommend draining it in the winter too. Since this is full in the winter, it freezes, it cracks, then you'll need a new water heater. So to drain it, before you take your plug out, shut off all the sources of water. Then you're going to open this. You're going to have to hold it open. It doesn't stay open because the latch is in the way. Water will squirt out, or if you just started filling it, it'll be air. Um, if you were running it, careful, it will be hot water. Stay to the side. Once it stops squirting out, you've relieved all the pressure. Let that snap close. Make sure you let it snap close. That's how it gets a good seal. Then you can take your drain plug out. Um, if you neglect to relieve the pressure first, it's all coming out here, and you're going to get a hot bath. You might even have this get launched at you. This is your anode rod. So that's your drain plug. So if you look... If I can do this as steady as possible. There is a rod that goes all the way through this. And there's this material on the outside. This is going to absorb any impurities and whatnot in the water and from contacts to the metal because it's a glass, it's a glass line, a porcelain lined steel tank. So there's you know that's why they put these in here. These last a couple seasons, depending on how harsh the water you're using are and how often you use your water heater. Um, but they say when you have about 25% of this material remaining. Get yourself a new new one. They're like 20 bucks, so not terribly expensive. Some people buy one every season. I don't think you need to, but if you're a heavy user, you might have to. Here is a uh, vent for your range hood. So if you're cooking on your range hood, make sure you pop this open. So we have the fan on. It actually has somewhere to vent out too. If not, it's just gonna stay closed. These got these nice steps here. They are adjustable. There are, there are uh, little tabs here. Pinch these in. You can adjust the height of these legs so you can move the steps up and down if the, if the ground is uneven and whatnot. You don't want them too high though because if you have them too high, this can interfere and hit this side of your door when you try to close it. So keep that in mind. We'll go inside now. Here's your in command. Right now it's asking for a passcode. I think it's all zeros. Yep. If you wish to change that, go to your settings. 
go to uh, passcode, type in the current one, and then it'll ask what you want to do, change it, delete, um, clear it, and whatnot. You can go to Bluetooth, so you can pair your phone to this and do everything off your phone, Wi-Fi, and whatnot. This does not have the Wi-Fi in it. Change the date and time and whatnot. Fresh tank is full. We will drain it before it gets delivered. So this is what it looks like when it's full. That lighter shade of blue. And then like two-thirds, three-thirds, and whatnot. And all of them will look like that when they're full. HVAC, that is your uh, like thermostat for everything. Tap this. You're going to go to your rear AC. This is pre-wired for front AC. It does not actually have it. That can be an aftermarket thing if you want. Tap mode. So right now it's going to be fan. It'll just run the fan on the AC. You have fan low and high. Tap it again. You have cool. Now it brings up one option, which is auto. So it goes as low as 55 if you want. But auto will regulate the temperature to this right here, 64. So it'll cycle the compressor on the AC on and off to regulate that 64 degrees or whatever temperature you have it set at. Zone, it just tells you what it is in here. 71 is pretty warm. Tap fan. Now you're just going to be low and high. That means that the compressor will not cycle on and off to regulate that. So it's just going to keep running. Eventually it will freeze up because of its overrunning. And then you have to wait for it to thaw. That's why I recommend auto. Tap mode again, you get heat. It looks like you could select source. Your only source is gas. If you leave your heat mode with fan mode auto, and you have it set to where it would turn on, so it would have to be above 71 degrees, when you're on auto, the furnace will, it will turn the, uh, that on. The, the fan for the AC to help circulate some of the air through here. Uh, so don't be alarmed if you turn your furnace on, the fan on the AC turns on. It just helps circulate air, the warm air. Now you have mode auto. So that's going to choose what appliance to set. So it's set to 66 and it's 71 in here. So it knows to turn the AC on. But it, let's say if it drops to 40 degrees in here for some reason, it'll know to kick the furnace on to bring it up to 66 degrees, which is nice. You can uh, schedule start and stop times, so you can schedule to start at a certain time, you can stop at a certain time. It's all on you guys, what you guys want to do. If you want it to start at 8 in the morning and stop at 3 in the afternoon, you certainly can. Lights, so you can control your bedroom lights on and off, ceiling light, and then awning light. So awning lights, nice bright, bright lights. They'll light this up real nice at night. Turn that off there. Go back. You have your slides. So you can control your wardrobe slide, which is your bedroom slide. Your sofa slide, this one. And then your awning. So Your awning does not stop automatically when it reaches this outward position. So you'll have to let go of the button. But that's what it looks like when it's all the way out. You can see the tube, the, the flap that hangs down. They are adjustable for pitch. Pull this down. Oop. Sometimes you gotta. It's too many. There you go. Pull this down. The lower one side. So if it's raining, you can have water pitch off to the corner rather than all the way along the edge. If you have this open and it's pouring down rain, I definitely recommend closing your awning, especially if it's getting real windy. You don't want it to get ripped off. If you roll it in wet, as soon as you get the chance to, roll it back out when it's sunny and nice to let it kind of dry off so it doesn't retain moisture and get moldy. We're actually going to turn this off so we can hear. Settings, like I said, go Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, all your settings there. Turn your water pump on and off from here. You can read battery voltage for here, so this is telling me that we're plugged in and it's charging. Um, that's why it's 13.6 instead of 12 something. Water heater. So you can be gas, electric, or gas and electric. Remember when you use electric, you have to have that switch on the outside on. I did turn it off, so remember that. When you are using electric, make sure that you do have water in the water heater so you don't burn out that heating element. Then you can run gas and electric at once if you want to. Hit interior lights, it's going to turn off. All the main interior lights, so all the ones on the main ceiling, it's going to turn off. You can also use them to turn on. All these lights, like these ones under here and under there and on the slides and whatnot, those you'll have to turn off manually. Uh, it's either side here with USB port on both sides, which is nice. So if you're sitting here, it's kind of relaxing. You can plug your phone in and whatnot. 
this table does turn into a bed. It's very difficult to do while filming one-handed, but you undo this latch here, then you just push in on one side of the table, and you can see how it'll pivot down, then it'll lay flat so you can rest it on here and there and there. And then you're just going to take those square cushions, that rectangular one, and so this square one, fill in this gap, and you'll have a spot for someone to sleep. Slide out here, so your light controls. This turns into a bed as well. We did change out the theater seats that were in here for this bed as requested. So move these out, which I think is a good idea because now you have more people spots for someone to sleep in here than before. Lift up underneath here, pull out like that. Take these down, fold them down. Same thing with the other side. Kind of difficult to do one-handed, but we got it. Let that lay down, then you lay that down. Yeah. Then a uh, second spot for someone to sleep on. These aren't the comfiest. Um, I recommend usually like a maybe a memory foam or a foam pad. Um, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put an air mattress on there. So like inflate one outside and bring it in. Plug it in one of the outlets by the dinette. Um, and then you can lay an air mattress on there so it's a bit more comfortable than laying on that. Not that they're like hard as a rock, but... Sorry about the shakiness. I'm trying to walk around with these cushions and whatnot. Pretty simple. Pretty simple stuff. Do have a TV that says unbutton, unclip, and swivel out. Make sure when you travel you do leave that clipped. Another outlet in there. It's prepped for an inverter. This is this unit does not have an inverter, but if you wanted to get the inverter prep done, they put in an inverter and then all these outlets labeled that way will work off of it. So you could run your TV off the battery because an inverter changes 12 volt to 120. If you are going to do that, keep in mind that that will drain your batteries pretty quick trying to watch TV off of them. You have a cable, which is what the TV's hooked to. It also runs off the antenna. And then a satellite. So if you do get a satellite hooked up, you hook it into the satellite out there, hook your receiver into here, then hook your TV into the satellite receiver. And you got satellite. Pretty easy stuff. You have remote, so TV remote, fireplace remote, and then radio remote. Fireplace, power button, turns it on. Flame, changes in color. I like this purple one the best. Um... So turning on and off the heat right there, setting a timer here, and then here is changing like the like the on or off, like the intensity of the heat. There you go. I think it goes all the way to 82. It looked like. Yep. And it's all electric, so you need to be plugged in for it to work. Um, it does start producing heat pretty quickly, and it's, it's pretty warm, which is good. So if it's cold enough to if it's not cold enough to run the furnace but there's still a chill this will help get the chill out of the air which is real nice radios are super simple power on and off here you can change the zones zone one is the inside speakers zone two is the outside speaker so you can choose what speakers are on and off one through six are presets push and hold to save a preset you have uh, pause play stop rewind fast forward bluetooth and other mode selection um this is also a DVD player. Just pop a DVD in there. It's already hooked to your TV. Um, it's not HD, but it is. Uh, it's not blue. Blue Bluetooth. Not, excuse me. It's not Blu-ray, but it is a um, HD DVD player. So turn your TV to one of the HDMI channels and pop in the DVD, and you're good to go. Um, you can Bluetooth your phone to this too. Um, you look for a Furion DV3300S-BL on your phone. It'll ask for a pin. It'll even tell you what it could be. See, the usually all zeros are one, two, three, four. Super simple. Auxiliary port, headphone jack, you'll probably never use. USB does not interface with the radio, but it is there so you can charge your phone. Pretty simple. This remote will act as like the radio remote and the DVD player remote. The only thing that this remote um, can't do that this radio can is change your zones. You can't change your zones off of the remote. Microwave works like a standard microwave. You're not plugged in. Camper's not the microwave's not gonna work. You have a light here and a fan. Remember what I was saying? It takes a while to kick on. It spins up. Remember what I was saying? If you can use that fan, make sure that flap on the outside is open. 
Folding cooktops. These are the newer Furion stoves. I really like these. So, you got your knobs. You got this right here. So, that turns on the decorative lights for the knobs. In the middle is off. Down is the knobs. And is also your oven light. The neat thing about these is when you turn the burner on, they go red, which is cool. Turn the burner on, twist the sparker, light right up. Like I said, the gas is off. So there goes all the gas in the lines. Turn it off when you're done. And don't be worried about twisting this aggressively. It's, you're not going to break anything from a spark in it. Um, your oven's a little bit different. You turn this to the flame. Push and hold that in. As you're holding that in, twist your sparker. You're looking for the pilot in the oven to light. Once it's lit, you can turn it to your desired temperature. If you're going to use it again later, if you turn it off to the flame, it shuts the burner off, but it'll leave the pilot lit. Definitely recommend if you're going to leave your trailer unattended or before you go to bed to turn that pilot off. So let's fold back and down. More countertop space. GFCI, another GFCI outlet. Nice big sink with removable spray brush. You can do the spray or a uh, like a single stream. Refrigerator is very simple to use. So that's off. That's on. You have uh, auto or gas. I recommend just leaving it on auto. Auto is going to allow the fridge to s uh, default to 110. So if you're plugged in, that's what it's going to use. If for any reason you were to lose power this will auto and you have the propane on, it will automatically switch to running off of uh, propane. Now, whether you're running gas or electric on this fridge, it will take anywhere from 6 to 9 hours to get cold. Just That's just the way they're designed and the way they work. They work differently than a normal fridge. So plan your trips accordingly. If you can, plug it in the night before and let it get cold. That way you don't have to wait a half a day when you get to the campground to use your, your fridge. Coming up here, you do have a light switch. The one in here and the one in the bedroom always appear to be in the downward position. They always return back to that. That's going to be your switch for the lights in here, the main ones. That's just because they're also controlled off the in command. Bathroom, very simple. Toilet, as long as you're... Pulling this, it's flushing. Use RV marine toilet paper in there, and then don't use antibacterial soaps because you need bacteria in there. There's a whole bunch of products you can purchase that we that you can put in there to help the smell and help break down waste. Shower, very simple, hot and cold, removable shower head, which is nice. When you do travel, please make sure you retain these doors open so they're not sliding around. Here's that main GFCI I was talking about. Any GFCI would have trip. This is the one you're gonna hit reset on. Here's your bathroom light. Plenty of storage in here, there, underneath, plenty of drawers and whatnot. Sliding door, make sure you clip that in when you travel. Again, so it's not bouncing around all over the place. You do have a fan in here. So crank up the lid, turning the fan on, especially when you're taking uh, hot showers or if you had spicy food the night before. <laughs> Bedroom, not a whole heck of a lot. Same switch as in that hallway. Another spot, a spot in here for a television. So you feel around in the wall. You're going to feel for a backer. There's one like right here. Definitely recommend. Figure out where you where you want the TV. Kind of pound for a backer. I always mark where I put them out. And then I use like a small brad nail or something to punch a hole to make sure I'm actually going to hit something solid back there. Um, if I miss, it's no big deal. I can use a little bit of white crayon or something to fill in the hole. Um, and if it's good, put the mount over it. So you know you're hitting some meat back there. Not just into that thin wall board. Here's another vent here. This one is non-powered. It's just going to have a, a vent. No fan. Um, that's a spot for a second air conditioner. Um, a second air conditioner. I don't know if it'll be uh, ducted. I think it'll be a ducted one. Yep, it'll be ducked into these ones. If you do opt to purchase one, let make sure you let them know you have a Cougar with an in-command system. So they can purchase all this extra stuff. This is an extra control box you get so it can be controlled from your in-command. Light above the bed. Plenty of space in these wardrobe cabinets. Oh, there you go. I was looking for these before the video. These are uh, covers for your sink. So we'll make sure they get put in. Um, they are this, pretty much the same material as, as a cutting board. So you can opt to use it as one. Um, not a lot of people do because it kind of ruins them a bit. So we'll put these aside. Lift this bed up. 
There is storage underneath your bed. Quite a bit of storage. Um, so extra sheets, blankets, pillows, and whatnot. So you can you can stick them in there. That's pretty much it for the bedroom. Um, a couple tips. Make sure these cabinets are all the way closed. Don't overstuff them full of stuff so that they pop open. Because if they pop open and they run into your bed when you're closing your slide, you broke something. And uh, that would unfortunately be a non-warranty thing. Any customer damage like that. Right. A few more things. Uh, you got a smoke alarm with a 9-volt battery. So when that starts chirping, you th just throw a new 9-volt in it. You should have a... I think your um, LP is also a carbon monoxide. We'll find your LP alarm. Yep, that's down here. That's also carbon monoxide. That's hardwired to the 12-volt system. So there are no batteries you have to worry about changing with that. That thing down there. However... That, those batteries up underneath the fifth wheel I was showing you, if those were to start to die, that's going to start chirping. Just saying it doesn't have enough voltage to operate correctly. Plug the camper in, let it get charged up. Let the batteries get charged up so it's not beeping at you. Right in there is your breaker box. So, all your breakers for your 110 stuff. And then you have all your fuses for your 12 volts. So, it looks like you have all 15s and a 10. So, I recommend just buying some spare fuses just to keep in here, just in case. Oh, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else I would have missed. Oh, right there, like I was saying, this is uh, on the Flaminia Command. It's pre-equipped for Wi-Fi, so if you opted for the Wi-Fi, there's a thing that goes in here that we're just going to replace that. That gives you the Wi-Fi and whatnot. And then you do have a fire extinguisher. The fire extinguisher, the LP slash carbon monoxide alarm, and the smoke alarm, and your propane tanks all have a 10-year um, lifespan. So regardless of whether your alarms have ever rang... Or well, you've ever had to replace the batteries in them, or you've ever used your fire extinguisher in 10 years, get them replaced. Now, propane tanks, you can use them after they expire. You just can't get them filled anymore. Um, it's probably easier just to get them exchanged, um, but we do fill, fill tanks. And then um, some places can get them recertified for another five years. Um, it's sometimes it's cheaper just to take them to like the gas station and get them exchanged for a newer tank. All right. Well, that's pretty much it for the year. Your interior part of the walkthrough. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below or uh, give your salesman a call. I hope you found this video informative. I hope you guys really enjoy this this trailer. I really do like these Cougars um, with the with the kind of like the rear dining and this kitchen area. Um, it makes a good use out of space. So, hope you found it informative. Hope you guys enjoy it.